I'm JC at Motorcycle Superstore, and today I'm going to show you how to remove and install a set of motocross grips. You can do this for any off-road bike, it's all pretty much the same, but one of the things you might want to consider when doing this is that there's several reasons why you might need to. Grips are one of these things that just wear out, they suffer a lot of damage. How do you know if it's time to change your grips? Well, first off, if they're worn down, if the nubs and the grips that you're used to having are no longer there, if you find your hand slipping, get some fresh grips. Also. If you can turn it on the handlebar, if it's spinning, that's a bad sign as well. It's time to pull them off and either reapply them or put some fresh ones on. So, different reasons why you might need to do that. However, let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need for this job. If you already know what tools or you don't really care, you can click this button right here and skip straight to the installation action. The tool lineup is pretty basic. First off, we need a small screwdriver. This can be a flathead or a Phillips, doesn't really matter. We're going to use it to uninstall and we're also going to use it to help install the new grips as well. So very important to have that little guy. Also, you're going to want a set of dikes, diagonal pliers. This is for cutting the wires if you already have safety wire around your grips. If you're going to reinstall safety wire, you'd like a pair of these. These are a specialty item. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive. However, basically they're called safety wires or grip, uh, safety pliers or grip pliers. And it's a specialty tool that allows you to actually spin the wire without having to manually twist it. So very handy to have. You can just use a regular set of pliers if that's all you've got. Now, you also need a box cutter, some sort of a knife if you want to trim the ends. This is for people who are going to be using hand guards. If you don't need them, you will not need a box cutter. Safety wire, if you choose to do that, that's an extra layer of safety. We're going to need it, obviously, to wrap around the bars. In terms of adhesives and cleaning units, chemicals, we do have some contact cleaner. You're going to want to clean the handlebar after you've removed the old grip, so that's important. Also, some sort of an adhesive. We'll get into this more in depth, but you can use a grip glue. You can use spray paint. There are several options to use. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Gloves are very handy, particularly if you're going to use the spray paint method. It's nice to keep things clean. Make sure you have a rag handy as well. And of course, our brand new grips, which we need to have on hand. So that does it. Now let's see how all this stuff goes together. You saw the basic tools and we will need those. However, you may need an additional tool as well that we didn't cover. If your bike is set up like mine where it has hand guards on it, we're going to need to remove those. Obviously, the grip is going to slip on from the end, so we have to have access to that. The tools may vary depending on which style hand guards you have on. Mine just takes some Allen wrenches. I'll pull this off very quickly and then it will commence. Okay, now that we got access to this thing, getting them removed is actually pretty easy, depending on which type of grips you have on. If they're aftermarket grips like this one, they're probably loose, they're pretty easy to pull off. However, if they're your stock grips, those things are gnarly. They're vulcanized on there. They're probably not spinning, they're probably just worn down. You may have to use a box cutter to cut this thing all the way off. However, for something like this, we shouldn't have to go that far. So, we'll use our dikes here. This already has safety wire on it. We're going to need to remove that first and foremost. If you're trying to reuse these grips, be careful not to cut big chunks in it as you're doing this. I'm not going to do that, so I don't really care. Nip those off. And once that's done, we're going to take our small screwdriver. All of these are double wrapped. And now this is where this starts coming in handy. What we're going to do, this is really good, especially if you're going to reuse these. You want to slip this screwdriver down the end of the bar. So you're going to slide it in between the grip and the handlebar. And what this does, as you work it in there, you just kind of want to work it all the way around the bar. What you're doing is you're breaking any remaining seal that's in there. If you've got glue or whatever it is that's inside, if you don't have a long enough screwdriver, go from each end. So you want to get this thing nice and loose. What that allows us to do then is spin it or pull it straight off depending on how loose it is, all the way off the handlebar. If you want to reuse your grip, then you're going to need to clean the inside of this. So, what I always do is shoot a little bit of contact cleaner or brake cleaner down in there, get it good and rinsed out, scrub it with your finger if you can, and then obviously let it dry very well before you go put it back on. However, if you're not going to use it, go ahead and throw it away. Stick it on your broom handle. I don't care what you do with it. Just get busy with the handlebar here and get this surface nice and clean. So, this is what our brake cleaner is for. Use your rag, obviously, and then just spray this thing on. Make sure you don't get it in your eyes. It's nasty stuff. And give it a good scrub. So what we're trying to do here is remove any adhesive that might have been left over 
from our old grip. So once this is nice and clean, you can see what's coming off of here. I actually use spray paint on my grip, so you can see that a lot of this is still coming off. So get it nice and clean. Brake cleaner will get all of this stuff removed very simply. So once that's uh, done, make sure that you allow it to dry, and now we can start going ahead and putting on our new grip. Before we go slapping on our new grips, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we're using the proper grip on each side. The throttle housing side is gonna be slightly larger. The bar diameter is the same, but when you put your throttle tube over the top of that, it increases the diameter just slightly. So, as you're looking at your new grips, you're gonna look at the end of them. The one with the larger hole goes on the throttle side. Sometimes it's pretty hard to tell. These actually are hard for my eye to pick up. One trick, slide your finger in there. You can see this one stops at the first knuckle. This one, it goes all the way in. So I know that this one is going to be my larger diameter, therefore it goes on the throttle side. So we'll set that one aside till we're ready for it, and we'll just work with this one over here. Now, the next thing is the adhesive. And this is where I gotta be a little bit PC with you guys. So, in order to be uh, on the up and up here, manufacturers recommend that you only use their grip glue. So if you buy Renthal grips, use Renthal grip glue. Pro Taper grips, use Pro Taper grip glue, and so on and so on. The idea being that if you use something different, the chemicals might have a negative reaction with the rubber, could break it down over time. That's the PC version. Now here's the real world rider version. Anything that sticks pretty much works. Grip glue, shoe glue, super glue. I use spray paint, spray adhesives or something you might consider. The worst thing that really happens is your grip comes off, which could be dangerous like we mentioned, but keep in mind, you can find what works for you and what doesn't. I've gone with spray paint. This is the easiest option for me. The reason I choose this is because it allows for it to lubricate very well. You put it inside a heavy coat and it slips on the bar. When you're trying to squeeze this onto the bar, it doesn't, it doesn't want to go on there by itself. You put tacky grip glue on there as well, or inside of here, it makes it even more difficult. So this is nice. I will say it doesn't grip necessarily as strong. So use whatever you're comfortable with, but keep in mind there are several options. So what we're going to do now is use our spray paint. We're just going to give this thing a nice thick coat in here. This is one of the reasons why we're wearing gloves so it doesn't get everywhere. You might want to put a drop cloth down if you're in your shop or whatever. Keep in mind, it will start to drip, so make sure it's not falling on your body panels. Give it a quick once over when you're done and wipe off any paint that might have dripped. Same thing goes with glue if you're using that as well. Here's a little pro tip for you as well. This isn't mandatory, but it makes your life a lot easier. Remember that little screwdriver we were talking about? The reason we're gonna need it to install, we're gonna actually poke a hole in the end of our grip. Now, this can potentially allow dirt to get in, so decide whether or not it's something that you wanna do. However, since I run Bark Busters, I'm gonna cut the ends of mine off anyway. So, in order to put these things on, you're actually fighting a couple different forces. This basically fills up with air as you push it in there and it creates a back pressure. So if you poke a little hole in it like this, very simple, just in and out, it allows an escape for that air to be pushed out the back, it'll allow it to slide on much easier. So, let's give this thing a shot of spray paint here, or glue if that's your style, and we'll see if we can get on the handlebar. Hold it close to it, that way you're not making a huge mess. I'm usually pretty liberal with the paint, like I said, it helps lubricate. See how easy I am able to slip this thing on? That's really easy compared to trying to do this without paint. So uh, that's definitely one of the benefits. Now, whether you're dealing with paint or grip glue, it's going to start getting tacky really quick. So you wanna make sure that these grips are oriented the proper way. It's, sometimes it's hard to do. This is up here at my chest level. You might wanna get back on the bike to where it's down here in the riding position and make sure that you have this thing rotated evenly in the direction you would like it. This one makes it pretty easy because it says front this direction. So pretty straightforward. But typically half waffle grips, the waffles will be on the bottom side to give you more grip on your fingertips. So this one seems like it's lined up pretty well. I'm gonna be happy with that eh, right about there. Now, all you have to do really is let this thing dry. Grip wire is not mandatory. However, it is a really good idea and I highly recommend it. This is safety wire. So essentially what you're doing is provide an extra layer of safety. This grip glue, this, this spray paint, whatever you're using, it will fail over time. So this is gonna help keep you a little bit more secure. Especially for guys like me who have death grips on these things, we twist them off. I usually double or triple wire all of my grips. Now you're gonna notice that the grips will often have some sort of a groove that's designed to allow this. So you don't wanna have these causing problems, causing blisters underneath your gloves. So this one has three different grooves. One up here are the thumb guard, one in the center, one on the end. And this is basically a guideline for this wire to then lay inside of and it's going to be pretty much flush with the top of the grip. So 
One thing about the wire, you can buy this at any bike shop, obviously, hardware stores carry it. I grew up on a farm, I used electric fencing wire pretty much my whole life. So any, any type of wire will essentially work. Uh, one of the nice things about this sort of thinner wire is it's very easy to then tuck underneath. After we snip it, you're gonna have to tuck that in and you don't want a big beefy piece of wire under there. So the thinner stuff works pretty well. What you're going to want to do, I double wrap. You don't have to, you can single or double wrap. But what you'll do is basically do a dry fit like that. Leave yourself plenty of space on the bottom, at least an inch, and then snip it off and you'll be ready to go. Now, before you go ahead and redo this every single time, take this thing off, pull it out straight, and then measure out several of these. If you want two per or whatever, measure them out, cut them before you start, that'll be a lot easier. Also, give yourself a couple extra because you're gonna break them. I break probably 50% of the ones I do. So you just gotta learn to get a feel for your wire and for your pliers. Now as we lay this on, we do not want them to cross over. We'd like them to stay side by side. Then, as we pull them down, give them one twist, as kind of as high up as you can get. And then I give it a few extra as well because once this set of pliers gets on, you're gonna see exactly how they work. This is where this specialty tool comes into play. If you were to do this manually by hand, that's a lot of pulling and twisting. With these, you're able to pinch onto the wire with the tips, and then if you'll notice, there's a locking device here. So you grip it at the base and slide this lock into place, and now it'll hold there. And as you pull this bottom piece, it's going to spin the wire on its own. So, makes it very handy. You want to look underneath there, kind of get an idea of how far you can go. And then, when it's ready to be snipped off, you simply press this, it releases the lock. And you want to leave yourself about half an inch, five eighths. The nice thing about that, it may seem a little bit long to you, but here's what you want to do. Think about gripping your handlebar. So, our hands typically go this way, right? So, we do not want the end of the wire catching our finger as it rotates around. So you're going to want to bend your wire to the front of the grip. That's going to be the best way to do it. Now, before we do that, take the very end, grip it, and make a small hook right at the base. That hook is then going to dig into the rubber and help it stay there and tuck it away so that it's not catching your fingers. So, using the tip of your pliers, you can probably get most of it all the way over with your thumb, but then you want to use your pliers and really dig that wire up into the rubber. Press it in there, try to poke it into the rubber itself, and make it disappear. And now, what you're left with is a relatively smooth face. So you're not going to feel that as your hand rotates back, or on the throttle especially when you're doing it, it won't be snagging your fingers. So this is how it's properly wired. Put as many on as you like. If you want to put five of them on there, go for it. I don't care. But keep in mind, try to keep them even. If you're a death gripper, you may need a little bit more wire than if you're someone who has a light style of riding. So, that pretty much does it. It's going to be the exact same thing on the other side. I will make one note, however. As I was installing this grip, you saw me kind of twist it back and forth. It's not going to work the same on your throttle side because as you twist it back, the throttle is just going to turn, so it won't give you any resistance. So as you're sliding that on, just twist it to the front of the bike as you're pushing it. That will allow you to get it on there nice and easy. So it's the same thing, however. Use all the same utensils, use the same wiring technique, and you'll be set to go. That's how you do your grips. It's very simple. I'm telling you, as soon as you're done listening to me, you can just do this very quickly. So, it's something that you can do on a regular basis. Fresh grips are really important, and like we mentioned, it's a big safety thing. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully, this gets you off and running with some fresh handle grips. And we'll see you next time at Motorcycle Superstore.